page 236, part 18. For every human being, a great inner power is necessary in order to cope with defeats. But to be strong and to cope with things does not mean simply a muddling along in the false hope that perhaps everything will indeed come good as a result of one's own power. In fact, in order to cope with defeats and the like, one needs the knowledge that the inner power is really so great that everything can be overcome. However, this power is not simply given, as has already been explained. Rather, one must acquire it with great effort, and it is associated with the entire education of one's own personality, which must, in the depths of one's consciousness, first likewise be laboriously achieved over the course of many years. This or that human being learns much right from the start, but others have to first have living practical experiences during their later years of life and gain cognitions and knowledge which enables them to carry out a life-affirming and evolutive change to the positive, the good, and the right. With one human being this change can be dramatic and quite extreme. With another, everything may seem effortless. But what is actually necessary for such a change? It is actually sufficient to know that one is absolutely in a position at any time to carry out every desired change if the guidelines are followed and the necessary powers are created and mobilized and if all other prerequisites are satisfied. From this knowledge the human being is able to build from ideas, ideals, wishes, imaginations, intentions, and the purest setting of zeal of the life and so forth which he or she mentally forms, tends, and nurtures and thereby allows to become the might by means of which the thoughts are brought to fruition. If a human being's life is especially hard, harder than is generally demanded by the kind of life he or she leads, then he or she should really honestly ask himself or herself what is the matter with him or her, what is not right in his or her inner self, and where exactly and what kind the actual problem is. Very often the human being himself or herself makes his or her life difficult, oppressive, disadvantageous, and barely endurable. But as a rule, the error pertaining to that is not searched for in oneself, rather it is pushed onto other human beings, or the social conditions beyond one's own control are simply held responsible for it and are declared to be to blame. However, as a rule, the actual problems do not actually lie beyond the individual's control, rather they lie in the individual himself or herself. And exactly that is the crucial point which makes it obvious that the necessary solutions also lie in the individual. If a failure emerges in some form, regardless of whether it is in the area pertaining to the consciousness and thoughts, in one's character, in one's morality, or in one's mood, whether in one's external behavior and in one's presentation of oneself, or in some sort of life situations and in the environment, and so on and so forth, it can be recognized with exact consideration and investigation practically always, or at least in most cases, that everything leads back to a dominating negative kind of thought pattern, as well as to the presence of elements of failure in one's own personality. Such elements of failure eat into the thoughts and determine their negative form, whereby, in the consciousness, the knowledge about one's own inner power is displaced and is destroyed and makes room for a pure belief which also very quickly manifests unconsciously and operates automatically. 
And this belief is then built upon the destructive idea that one's own ability to be successful is lacking or has been choked. Therefore, it is all the more important for every human being to always be clear and conscious and know that he or she becomes, or is, exactly that which the image of his or her consciousness produces, because everything is brought to fruition by means of the might of the resulting thoughts. But what is to be done now in the case in which, in one's own consciousness, one's own capabilities for being successful are doubted. The solution to that is actually simple, because, in fact, the image of the consciousness must only be turned around, so that a reverse picture, so to speak, comes about. But even when that is easily said, it is not so easily done, nor brought into effect. As a rule, a considerable re-education is connected with that by means of which character and morality as well as the whole personality must be transformed. And precisely that is not always easy because often a great many alterations are necessary regarding this. Creative and constructive achievement is therefore not easy but also not impossible when the required cognitions lived practical experiences and the knowledge which is associated with it are achieved and from that the capabilities which are set up by impulses are created. Now that perhaps appears worse than it really is but basically the whole process is relatively simple. First of all the thinking must be corrected which happens by means of the power of the consciousness which creates the will to correct the thoughts. That can be somewhat hard in the beginning and demand quite some effort, but it is not impossible. Thereby, it must simply be seen that human habits, such as the maintenance of wrong thoughts and views, and so forth, leave behind deep grooves in the consciousness which must be slowly repaired again and be made to disappear. Negative, bad, unhealthy, and wrong tendencies thereby naturally protest wildly. Consequently, a reorientation is therefore not only connected with many efforts, rather also with many errors, disagreeable circumstances and defeats, and so forth. Normally in such situations the human being allows himself or herself to be easily defeated by all the negative influences, but that only happens because he or she has lied to himself or herself for a long time, as far as his or her consciousness is concerned, often for years or decades, and has caused himself or herself to fail. Therefore, in such a situation, the human being must first confront himself or herself, namely, his or her personality and consciousness, which must be told that, from now on, new, healthy, positive, and progressive thoughts shall and will take possession of him or her and create their might. But along with that also belongs the vital knowledge and that success is actually achievable and is also reached. The old, unhealthy, and negative thought patterns are only thereby able to dissolve, in order to then ultimately disappear and lose their control. No patterns of thought and no ideas are allowed to control the intelligence. Rather, the human being must hold his or her thoughts and intelligence under control with his or her consciousness, because rational ideals and setting of Ziele and so forth can only be created and realized in that way, and indeed by means of the might of the thoughts which is steered by the consciousness. The secret to being strong lies in the dynamic, motivating powers of the thoughts and the powers of actual knowledge.
But how are these powers to be developed? How does the human being attain the characteristic of possessing that in order to in fact cope with the environment as well as with the life, all problems and with all situations? Praying and belief do not help here at all. And to wait for, quote, God, Jesus, or some sort of saint and so forth to bring help is not only completely senseless, rather it is absolutely without prospect because help has never come from them before and is never given by them. Because how could saints who are imaginary or are simply named saints by human beings do miracles or even just bring simple help? The fact is that the human being must always help himself or herself in every regard because he or she also bears the responsibility himself or herself in every regard for everything and anything and must fulfill all obligations in accordance with the creational natural laws and recommendations himself or herself. Hence the validity of the saying which already existed in ancient times quote, God helps those who help themselves. A completely justified saying because no God exists other than the human being himself or herself, quite in accordance with the fact that the designation, quote, God, is only a title thought up by human beings for human beings who are considered to be kings of wisdom. Dash I-H-W-H equals Ishwish. And once the human being recognizes and acknowledges this fact, then he or she really also becomes conscious of his or her own responsibility, which, on one hand, he or she bears and must follow for himself or herself, and on the other hand, also for all life, and thereby also for his or her fellow human beings. And this cognition leads to the fact that if he or she is confronted with difficulties, he or she counters them in the full knowledge that he or she alone is responsible for overcoming them. His or her knowledge about the whole truth and his or her obligation, which he or she is fulfilling in regard to the responsibility, become his or her way that he or she will take under all. Still so adverse circumstances, even when it is covered with stones and other obstacles and is hemmed by thorns. A healthy, neutral, positive, equalized, and good thought principle is absolutely necessary not only in all difficult situations of the life, rather in the whole of the life, and in regard to one's conscious evolution. Consequently, one's consciousness must be tended and nourished in this form so that the thoughts are created in harmony with that and the thoughts must then also control intelligence and rationality which are responsible for ensuring that every single thing every single concern every single demand and imagination every wish every intention every ideal and every effort and so forth is expressed in a healthy pure and neutral positive equalized kind and is brought to fruition by means of the might of the thoughts. And the fact is, were a human being to begin already from childhood to build up a consciously healthy, pure, right and positive pattern of thoughts, then he or she would be as good as immune from all the defeats and adverse circumstances which happen to him or her in life and from all the hostile situations and circumstances and so forth which attack him or her. He or she would thereby have an almost unshakable power for his or her entire life. However, that is unfortunately not the case with most human beings because as a result of the deficient education on the part of the parents or guardians, and because of their resulting and likewise defective self-education,
they are not able to create any such ideal world in their thoughts. Consequently, they must simply fail, in large part, right down the line. But if, in cognition of that which is better, then one day, they then one day want to call an ideal of world of thoughts their own, then they must first achieve this extraordinarily laboriously and with deprivation, which, however, is many times more difficult for them if they had already learned it as children. How the human being sees things and the attitude that he or she takes on, as well as the way he or she is inclined to think, determines whether his or her inner nature lives in darkness and obscureness or in light and radiation. Also determined by those things are love and hate, as well as joy and sorrow, and the entire palette of feelings, which, as the reflection of the thoughts and their might, form and determine the state of the psyche. For a positive developmental change, many human beings need a therapy which goes deeper which requires a healing deep within the structure of the personality. This is no more and no less than a fundamental, radical, developmental change, which is especially required when, over the course of many years, an inner structure of failure, in the form of tensions and conflicts and so forth, which were never overcome, has been built up, which is expressed in the most varied reactions and often leads to the defeatism, thus to a state which leads to the defeats, to the destruction and annihilation, and indeed as a result of the conviction that there is no prospect of success and victory. This state is connected with a tendency for giving up, coming to the fore. But also, all these terrible things can be removed when the correct steps against them are taken. The motto for this is, quote, Never lose heart. Take responsibility for yourself. Because as a result of bearing responsibility for oneself, one's feeling of self-worth increases, and from this develop wishes and efforts to make ever more of oneself and to climb to evolutively higher levels. Once the human being has managed to bring himself or herself to the point of bearing and fulfilling responsibility for himself or herself, and once he or she has become creative and constructive, then his or her positive attitude and dealings quickly and increasingly climb, whereby uncreative, destructive, and negative things of all kinds increasingly level out. But here the question is, what is actually to be understood by, quote, negative and positive, or, quote, creative and uncreative, as well as, quote, constructive and destructive? Negative essentially means negating, and positive means affirming. Creative can be identified with the value creational, and uncreative with uncreational. Constructive means joining together and building up, and destructive means demolishing and destroying. But in the psychological and human evolutive sense, very, very much more is contained in these values, as are more profound elements. By way of explanation, one can simply begin with the negative and the positive, next to which are the creative and uncreative, as well as the constructive and destructive, can be lined up. Thus, essentially, only the negative and positive must be considered more precisely and put under the magnifying glass.